Hello everyone, I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to give a big thanks to um, the CCA uh, and, um, and the team, Lev, uh, uh, Emily, Camille, and, and Jim. Um, and this has been a really, uh, actually a, 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 an enriching process for me uh, just to be able to kind of uh, look past all of the superficial things that we're, we're pumping out uh, every single day and and uh, you know, focus a little bit on some of the uh, the guts that that make our, our practice. I should probably say that uh, I'm speaking from uh, Toronto in, in Canada. I'm here temporarily. Normally, I'm in Boston, uh, but my practice uh, is uh, headquartered in in Beijing, where where we were founded. Um, I started the practice with my two partners, uh, Hezhou and Zhangfeng. Um, and uh, here you see a kind of an aerial view of Beijing. Uh, the red dot is where our practice is, uh, our office. Um, and it's this uh, very historic uh, neighborhood that's uh, very, very well preserved. Um, and it's right in the center of Beijing, uh, next to Tenmen Square that you see in the center here, and the, the Forbidden City uh, that's uh, right above. Um, and this neighborhood is a, a really a, a unique place. Um, it's, uh, it's very lively, um, there's, there's a very close-knit community here. Um, and you see that it's, uh, it's not necessarily the most you know, uh, you know, uh, tidy uh, environment, um, but also you know, our practice is not, not your, your typical, you know, very, very tidy uh, practice as well. Um, this, is a, this is an old courted house that we uh, renovated using uh, an approach that I'll uh, uh, explain a little bit more about later. Um, but it's, it's a place where we're, uh, we, we also try to uh, be very active, um, uh, not just with uh, you know, the things that we're doing on the computer, but also uh, uh, getting hands-on with, uh, with the designs that we're developing. Um, and we'll, we'll definitely take advantage of uh, the, the spaces that we have around us, the, we have a nice courtyard in the front, um, and also some of the resources that we have around us, um, uh, sometimes just hacking together uh, things that we're uh, uh, experimenting with, um, and even borrowing uh, you know, bicycles from, from neighbors uh, to try things out and then uh, re returning them afterwards. Um, and we'll, we'll take some, some uh, designs out for a spin, and uh, people around the neighborhood normally wouldn't really uh, think too much about it as it's, it's just something that, you know, the, these kind of quirky things that would, uh, you, you'd see it around is um, quite common. Um, I also wanted to introduce uh, our, our cook. We, we call him Daye, kind of, I don't know, Big Daddy is maybe how you, how you might translate that. And this is something that's kind of, I guess, unique to people that are outside of China. But you know, a lot of a lot of offices uh, actually provide lunch for uh, for um, uh, everyone. Uh, but you know, Daya is really special. He's he he's also a, a neighbor of ours. Uh, we just met him, and he heard that we needed uh, a, a cook. Uh, he he actually cooked for um, uh, an ambassador. Uh, so. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's quite a pleasure to have uh, someone like him. And also he grew up here, you know, and, and so he's, he's always telling stories about uh, this area. Um, and we also uh, invite all kinds of people in. We, we have, uh, you, know, you know, functions and parties and, and, uh, and, and just trying to find excuses for, uh, for uh, friends and neighbors to, to come around and, uh, and to hang out. Um, and inevitably people start doing <laughs> Things like climbing onto roofs and, and um, checking out the view up there, uh, just 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 because they can, um, and and I think this sort of uh, uh, leads me to just this 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 place where you you're not always sure what you can or can't do. You know, there's there's definitely a gray area uh, in terms of what's what's accepted, um, and. And it's it's something that uh, I just see actually um, all around me when I'm uh, when I'm moving about in China. Um, so this next section, uh, I like I'd like to talk about just sort of um, 
you know, pictures that I'll take uh, while I'm uh, in between places. And it's a, it's a form of uh, documentation, I think, that, that, really, um, uh, that really adds, adds a lot of value to, to our work. And it's, uh, it's, it's where I look for inspiration oftentimes. Um, so while these are not uh, documents uh, in terms of uh, text-based documents, um, they are uh, documents of uh, the you know th things that just are ha happening around me, um, and, and specific to certain time periods and certain situations because things just keep changing so so much. Um, but a situation like this uh, is is pretty pretty mundane, pretty pretty uh, uh, banal, I, I suppose, a, a parking lot. Um, but it does have this kind of funny circular area that's been. Uh, outlined and people are using a seating and a, a place to actually have kids uh, play with the, you know, w with family. Um, and uh, we literally took that uh, observation and incorporated it into uh, one of our projects. Uh, this is our social network factory and, and uh, an art, uh, public art project. Um, and, and um, you know, you can imagine uh, this being kind of uh, our version of um, street karaoke, I, uh, I suppose, um, and and also just the idea of doing a project on a parking lot is something that's not so outrageous uh, uh, here. And this this is a building that um, is is a it's a permanent building. It's a, a cultural venue uh, that didn't start off as being a building that was meant to be there. Uh, it kind of sort of grew into that. Um, so you just kind of never know how things would progress, and uh, unlike, unlikely situations um, can can come up um, unexpected. Um, I also enjoy uh, seeing a lot of the the life that's happening on uh, along streets, and oftentimes you'll see these canopies uh, that that expand out like an accordion uh, for shops to kind of take over. Uh, 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 public space, uh, oftentimes space that's not actually theirs or that you're supposed to uh, be be using. I guess usually this happens at night when a lot of the you know a lot of the authorities are are uh, are off work, um, and we actually took this idea and uh, used it for um, this uh, this large um, uh, um, urban intervention that we call uh, the, the People's Canopy. Um, so what we did we, we we stuck wheels on them. Um, and people can sort of parade them through through cities. We we worked with um, local governments uh, to um, uh, to to uh, 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 organize these events. Um, uh, this is actually in Leuven in Belgium, um, and uh, it's it, I think it does it does uh, follow the the same spirit that you would find in in these shops that we we see. Uh, uh, all around China using these, these similar canopies. So outside our office, we'll also uh, find situations like this with kids uh, surrounding a, a manhole and just that providing a, a platform for them to, to, to play games. Um, and we've taken that idea uh, uh, and used it here for this. Uh, this is our plug-in house, also on a, you know, a larger platform, but uh, we, we also splayed out all these different uh, uh, board games uh, for uh, for people to play, and it just kind of naturally draws people over, and, and, and people hang out. This is at uh, uh, Harvard Yard at Harvard University, um, and also uh, looking more closely at buildings, you, you also see a lot of things that happen sort of ad hoc or uh, buildings being changed for other uses. So if you follow a lot of the kind of HVAC uh, tubes. Uh, uh, you know, that, that you'll see on, on, on the sides of buildings, you'll find that actually they lead you to a program like, like, a, like a restaurant that's down in the basement somewhere that needs to be ventilated. And that, that's kind of uh, how, um, you know, how, how these come about. Um, so we use this kind of uh, uh, you know, vernacular um, to, uh, to, to do another project um, in, in this area called Bai Ta Si. So uh, we, we use these tubes to write out uh, the name of Bai Ta Si in Chinese, um, which, which is what these, the, all these uh, squigglies are. Um, but also these, these tubes allow people to look um, 
into uh, the interior space uh, on the level above. Um, so these are actually periscopes. There, there are also periscopes that, that point to uh, other landmarks around this, around this area. Um, and another thing we incorporated this is um, just this idea of uh, kind of informal uh, public seating that you, you also see people just kind of have leftover furniture that they'll put outside and they'll, they'll, they'll use it as kind of uh, a, a place to hang out and watch uh, things that are going on. Um, and so we, we also uh, incorporate the, incorporated this idea into, into this pro project. Um, so the, the next section is uh, really asking the question of uh, you know, what, what, what does, what does um, official really mean um, when you have so much sort of informality all, all around us, you know, things are constantly changing, just like those buildings with those, with those uh, ventilation tubes. It's a question that we're always uh, uh, thinking about is how, you know, how do you put your finger on what, what, is, what, is, what is real? What is, um, how do you ground yourself in a, in a place like this? Um, the, the project that I'll be talking about um, uh, is, it takes us back to the neighborhood where my office is located. Um, and so that, that's this area here, uh, Dashalar. And so, you know, Beijing is divided with this uh, north-south uh, axis. And I, I show this because I kind of want to uh, explain uh, different ways the government has gone through um, uh, urban regeneration, or you might call it urban renewal. Uh, in, in this area here, east of that uh, axis, you can see that the, the um, the fabric, the urban fabric is a little bit different from the west side. The, the east side is actually ha, has gone through a lot of upheaval. They've actually torn down uh, much of this area and rebuilt it. And now it's this kind of a commercial shopping area with, with uh, uh, Starbucks and Zara's and things like that. Uh, whereas on the, on the west side where we're located, um, it, it hasn't gone through that development. And, and so uh, what happened was there's this opportunity for us to uh, be involved in uh, in a pilot project to to come up with alternative ways of upgrading uh, some of these areas. They realized that what happened on the east side was probably a, a big mistake, and um, also that approach has been uh, uh, replicated in many places all all throughout, uh, not just in China, but you know certainly it's a, it's a, an approach that's happened uh, in many places. Um, and so we came to the re realization that you know this this sort of official approach that everyone kind of just ex you know just just accepts as that's that's just what you know uh, uh, how things are done uh, is not necessarily an approach that the government wants to take, but uh, that they don't have any better alternatives. They don't have any other ideas. Um, uh, and oftentimes, what you'll see is you you get this kind of glossing over of uh, of things that have, uh, you know, the, the, the actuality of, of, of a place. Uh, so you see here that there's this uh, kind of addition that's uh, outside of the, the uh, older structure. And you can tell from the brickwork, you know, that this is actually the real original kind of the thick brick that you usually see in the historic structures in, in Beijing. But then you have this kind of tile, thin tile type of brick that's kind of stuck on. And so this is pretty common. You see on, over on this side, uh, there's, there's plenty of that. And this is pretty common, uh, th this kind of dressing up of things. And, and it's a, sort of a covering up of uh, all the layers of history that are, that are uh, underneath. So I think it's a, a similar type of uh, mentality, this uh, uh, urban renewal approach. So for, for us, uh, what we did was we looked to how you know, your everyday person would uh, deal with upgrading their uh, their conditions. Um, so here, this is actually an old building in the neighborhood that uh, uh, has um, you know lots of residents there, and they, they they actually build they built inside this building, right? There's it's basically a house in a house, um, and so this was actually what we proposed. Um, you know, instead of uh, tearing things down, really relocating tons of people, uh, spending all this money uh, just to see that it commercially is not not really viable. Um, we said, well, maybe you can you can uh, you know build a house in a house uh, as a way of um, uh, upgrading a lot of these uh, places that are in uh, disrepair. Um, and so the way we did this is through this uh, you know, uh, prefabricated panelized system uh, that makes it really quick and easy and uh, and inexpensive. 
Um, so the, the, the situation is in this neighborhood is that there's uh, just a lot of properties that are vacant. You know, the conditions are poor. There's no, there's no sanitation, there's no, no, no private bathrooms, it's, it's cold. Um, so a lot of people have moved out and all the dark red uh, uh, squares are where um, uh, you have vacant lots. Um, and also there's a lot of uh, 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 informal uh, construction. You see uh, you know, lots of these structures here uh, especially these ones up up here, um, the, this this roof here that's been extended out. These are all additions uh, to what was there before. Um, and and in the middle is uh, in the center is our uh, a project that we did. Uh, and people might ask, well, so that that really stands out, and you know, it doesn't doesn't really fit. Uh, you know, it doesn't doesn't really match the environment. But for us, that's a really strange thing to say because, uh, I mean. All these things have been built over different periods, and what we built is appropriate for you know, the, the current uh, uh, time period in terms of uh, you, know, you know building approaches, right? Because you you just you know uh, in the past there was brick and wood, and, and later on you have different materials. Um, so in fact, um, we we believe that uh, this kind of aggregation of um, you know uh, activity and building um, is is appropriate. Right, the, this kind of mosaic of uh, of uh, architecture, um, and uh, we this approach that we took, this uh, we we call these all these plug-in projects, uh, is something that we also didn't treat as a one-off, but it was a, something that was a, a, a systematic approach to uh, upgrading this this whole area. Uh, so these are all these different examples in in this neighborhood. Um, but as we went through these projects, we also started uh, uh, investigating um, the the spaces that we were um, working on uh, uh, much 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 more closely uh, in a, an almost kind of forensic kind of archaeological uh, way. Um, actually, we would literally dig up things that you know we would dig up artifacts from from. Uh, uh, installing septic tanks and things like that. So here, this is uh, this is our office space, and you can see that there's this uh, you know a grinding wheel uh, that we found underneath, and there are also also all these uh, 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 vases that were used for um, we, we believe they're used for drainage, and uh, a lot of these things you know it's not these projects are so small that you don't you know no matter how hard do you try to look for experts that really understand this? It's, it's not easy to find because they're, they're focused on the large kind of you know, imperial structures and they don't, they don't really uh, put much attention into you know, small, small uh, structures like this. And so the only way we can really understand uh, you know, uh, the, the past, you know, what happened in the past is by just um, interviewing people and you know, just uh, kind of uncovering these uh, sort of oral histories. In the, the first courtyard that we did our uh, plugins, we we also found the stone object that you use for grinding uh, Chinese medicine. So um, we we realized that while you know you you know initially you think of all these places as just uh, you know re residential uh, you know spaces, uh, that in fact they're they've been used for uh, many different uses. So at one time this was. Uh, a place for uh, uh, producing Chinese medicine. And uh, at that time, you, you'd have a store in the front, you'd produce them in the back, and then you'd live fur further, in, uh, further in the back. And the family that was here was, uh, there um, uh, is the, the Wang family, um, who still live uh, next door. Um, and in this courtyard, Courtyard 72, um, we, we, we started asking more questions, like, you know, for example, why outside do you see all these uh, power meters, right? And, uh, there's, uh, I think, uh, eight, eight power meters here. And it turns out that that's how, uh, that's the city sort of making official the number of families that live in this courtyard. So this, these courtyards were originally at one time, just for one family, uh, the, the, the Wang family, uh, were then sort of subdivided up uh, somewhere around the time of the Cultural Revolution uh, to, to, to be given out to uh, different families. Uh, so th this was quite a disruption. Um, and then later on, this became even more official with with these uh, these power meters. And so we took a lot of these these oral histories and we we, uh, we wrote them down. We had them in Chinese and in English, and we put them all around uh, these spaces uh, at those locations where we sort of uncovered something that was interesting. Uh, so, for example, on the left here, um, 
we, we thought uh, this, this use of tarps that are put on top of grooves that are really old and broken up and leaking uh, is, is something that, is, um, that, that represents uh, 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 current conditions and, and, and ways of dealing with these, uh, these situations. Um, you know, not, not being able to also do it uh, properly and you know, uh, to, to redo the whole roof. Also, uh, we found that in this courtyard, um, there were parts of it that were painted green uh, and sometimes underneath other layers of paint. And, and this indicated this, this family uh, uh, was a, um, a Muslim family. Actually, this is a, uh, one of the largest uh, uh, Muslim communities in, in Beijing. And also you can see uh, on top of the tarps, uh, yeah, there, there's all, this, uh, all of these bricks that they used to, 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 to hold them down. Um, and, and also you see on the, this other side, it's a different family and, it, and the, the, the structure is painted red. Um, there are just many, many layers of, um, uh, of significance and history here. Uh, and, and then you have our, our plug-in project, uh, which is inserted without disrupting any of this. You know, it, it leaves it all there. We don't, we don't change anything that, that was already there. And there could be another day where, um, it's, it's not appropriate to have this and you take it down and again, you have um, the structure that was there before. Um, an, another way that we've used to, to document um, these, these uh, observations uh, is through, through um, uh, scale models. Um, you know, we, we've had opportunities to, uh, to exhibit this project in, in, in different places. So we use these models to, to not just show uh, the context in general, but actually to try to represent it uh, more accurately, uh, more accurately, right? With with uh, the power cables that have been kind of uh, tapped into by different neighbors to to, to bring uh, extra electricity over to to uh, their apartments, all the different air conditioners that are put all over the place, the different uses of of materials um, that uh, you'll find in this area, um, and we've we've done this for uh, many of the uh, plug-in projects. That we've uh, uh, that we've had. Um, you, you can even see also, also the, the the power meters that uh, that you have uh, uh, outside of the you know on the uh, exterior wall of these courtyard houses. But perhaps one of the most kind of official documents that we have is this uh, this uh, you know large uh, uh, CAD file um, that indicates uh, the. All the names of the the the, the families, um, you know, that, that own, uh, that reside in uh, all these different uh, sub subdivided portions of, of these courtyards, um, and how large uh, these spaces are. You can see a whole whole entire family would occupy 15 square meters, 20 square meters. Uh, they're very small. Uh, again, it wasn't meant to be. You know, originally it was meant just for one family. Um, the ones that are the, the ones that are hatched, all, all these are now currently vacant. Um, that there's probably more now than at this time, uh, and also the different types of hatching represent different types of ownership. Um, uh, technically, there's actually no private ownership of land in in China. Um, uh, however, in this area, it's it's not that clear because uh, the ownership of some of these properties extend, you know. Uh, much, much earlier, or happened much earlier than uh, um, the the current government. Um, uh, but in any case, you know you have you have people who who do own the the structure above the above the land uh, sometimes and you know, and, and sometimes not. Uh, but you have varying degrees of this kind of uh, situation. Uh, but what's interesting is that in this courtyard house, courtyard court, court seventy two, the Wang family actually has. Uh, a, there, a, a land a deed that was from the, the, the Qing dynasty. The government was, was at, of course, certainly you know, before the, the communist government. But for them, they, they believe they still own part of this um, courtyard. And you, you'll see that the, there's some areas in contention, which is um, actually this, this space right here, which is it's really small. Um, and it's, it's unclear to us whether or not it's officially a structure or, it's, or, or it was a, an, an informal structure. Um, apparently sometime, uh, you know, there, there, was a, there was a time that they ended up selling uh, much of the courtyard, but they, they, they claimed this area. And in, 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 in this photo, you can actually see it. It's this, this space right here. Um, but I, I just mentioned this just to show how 
Um, families can be just extremely attached to these places. Uh, you know, you, you may see kind of a, a space that's in ruin here, but uh, for them, they, they grew up here, they were born here, um, you know, they, they, they have their memories here, and they still live uh, um, uh, next door. Uh, they still want to be able to to come into this place and 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 and, and care for it, um, and so uh, the the Plugin House project, in interestingly enough, uh, was also um, very much supported by by the Wang family. Even though they you know they, they would come by, they don't really live here, but they 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 supported the idea because um, it it didn't it didn't disrupt uh, the the original structure, and you know all these parts and pieces have a have a significance for them. Um, so while while the the first core core house plugins uh, we did were, um, were were projects that we did uh, with the city, uh, and, and they were for vacant uh, vacant lots, uh, it was actually uh, more important for us to be able to uh, build these for for local residents. So the question was how how do you reach how do you reach these people that would be uh, interested in in, in this. So we we had lots of uh, you know media exposure, but you know international international outlets came came around and filmed and so on. But uh, it turns out that it was actually these these local newspapers that were uh, most important. Um, and uh, we'd have people come by. They they have these you know uh, newspaper clippings that that they they would bring to us and say, hey, you know, is this is this the the project that I see here? I'd be interested in this. You, know, you have to come over and check out my my uh, my house, um, and so that this is this is actually a really important uh, way for us to um, to to connect with um, the the people that we wanted to work with. Another way that we connected with you know, potential plug-in residents was actually just to just to have neighbors around. So this is Mrs. Stone. Who, who lived next to the plugin that we, we had installed here, and she watched the whole process. You know, originally kind of at a, you know very much at a distance, uh, very skeptical. Like, what what are you guys doing? With <laughs> what's what's going on here? Uh, it looks ridiculous. But over time, you kind of see her uh, her 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 position changed a bit. Her, you know, she she actually here you you see her act, you know helping us helping us out with uh, uh, redoing the courtyard here. Uh, and there was a point where she kind of. Uh, you know, walked into one of these plugins that we had in the middle of the winter and was like, oh man, this is nice and warm and you only have one of the heaters on? And, and you know, she, you know, she's got a, a several heaters and it's, it, it's really cold. And so she actually became uh, our, our first uh, resident to, to try one of these out. Um, another thing that, was, that attracted her and the reason for this photo is that because of the speed that we could do this, it, it was really important, really important that we could do this quickly because uh, there's been a lot of kind of you know bad experiences with you know between residents and, and the city because you know they would be promised uh, new homes they'd move out and then they'd find that they can't move, move back in you know it's, it's, it's a way to kind of uh, relocate people um, so we said well you know you don't have to worry about that um, you know you, you move your stuff out uh, for for one day uh, and then within that 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 period of a day we can up you know we, we can uh, 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 construct the, the 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 new the new plugin, and you move your stuff back. Uh, but it's also just really interesting to see. I mean, this is this is all the stuff that she owns in in her little twenty square uh, meter um, house. The next section, I'll talk about kind of the significance of uh, agreements um, and and really the the relationships that we have with uh, with our with our clients, with residents, uh, and, and and partners. Um, and um, you know th these are uh, these are more kind of traditional documents. Uh, on, on the left, you see this is the the first uh, contract that we had, uh, and this was with the city. It was a very complicated contract. It, it was us, the the general contractor, the city, a three way con a three way contract, many many pages. And you can see this is a typical way of uh, of making these uh, documents official. You, know, you have to spread them out and get the stamps. So it stamps on all all the different pages. And within this uh, original, this first uh, contract was also um, Mrs. Dong's uh, uh, plug-in. So, uh, you know, we, we didn't we didn't have an agreement directly with any of the the residents, but she she wanted to have some kind of uh, uh, an agreement. So so then on the, here on the right hand side, you see this um, this kind of handwritten uh, note uh, with 
what she wanted to have in her apartment. She wanted to make sure that we, we, we got that right. And so that, that was kind of our sort of um, unofficial contract uh, with her. Um, in the middle here is uh, a, a, one of the contracts that, that we did later on for other residents, um, but much, much thinner, only a few pages. Um, but uh, yeah, these, these were then contracts that were done directly with, uh, with residents. Um, and a, as an aside, I thought it'd be interesting to show all the different stamps that a company uh, needs to have, you know, even a small company, a company like us, uh, for, for all these different contracts. Um, and, and, and clearly you can see that some of these uh, really uh, seem to be a leftover from kind of you know, in, in, in imperial times. Um, and also, uh, that, that one contract is only uh, part of uh, our, you know, it represents only part of our um, responsibilities. Uh, in fact, in this kind of a project, we're really, uh, uh, you know, a one-stop shop. We're, we're performing, uh, you know, really all the services as, as much as possible that, that um, you would need for this project. So even for these very small projects, you know, 20 square meters, 40 square meters, you have all these documents, um, these are contracts uh, with uh, also different suppliers. We have contracts with uh, the factory. Um, we, have, we even have contracts with um, the people that supplied us with uh, these, uh, you know, the, the, the really unique toilets that you can't get here. They're actually imported from, 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 from Canada. Um, but uh, and we even have uh, contracts that tie us to the maintenance of, of these structures uh, you know, for, 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 for years on. And also uh, another um, set of documents that we had for for this uh, this project uh, were these were these uh, booklets that were um, made as as guidelines for the city to then deploy this on a, on a more kind of you know, larger scale and systematic uh, way after we built that first first initial one. So this kind of documented all the different things that we had to deal with. Um, you know, it kind of laid out all the different modules and and types and. Uh, and, and certain guidelines on how you would use this uh, analysis of, of the whole area, uh, uh, all the way from the scale of the, the whole, you know, the, the district, uh, and, and then getting down to um, uh, individual courtyards, because you, you don't know um, this, you know, what, you know, what you'll be confronted with, with these different courtyards. Uh, and, and so our, our system had to, had to be able to meet all these different uh, situations. Um, and below here, you see that these are um, uh, layouts for, for, for toilets and also for uh, septic systems. Um, these, these, these next, uh, these next uh, examples are um, uh, just sh showing uh, the, the, the range of things that we, we, had, to, we had to deal with. Um, uh, things that are just uh, extremely mundane, uh, such as uh, you know, where, where does where does your, your waste go uh, when, you, when, when you don't have a sewage system? So we, we had uh, you know, all kinds of septic tanks and these are you know, different types of composting toilets that we're, we're trying out um, and, 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 and integrating into our system. Uh, and we, we even had to create manuals uh, to help residents kind of understand how you would actually use this um, and, and you know, where you, you would find the uh, some of the ingredients that you need, you need these you know, compost accelerators and, and, and things like that. But we, you know, we tried to find uh, the simplest way to to have a have a toilet. Um, uh, you know, that, that, that's the least amount of trouble, uh, but didn't didn't require a sewage system. Uh, another thing is, um, uh, there, you know, residents will also have these these kind of makeshift spaces that are that are temporary. Um, and these come about because they built these additions outside of their home. So you know, this is an addition, uh, this, this side is an addition. So what happens, the reason why you have these two doors is because you can't move on the interior from one space to another. You have to actually go outside and go into the other space. So then when they open these doors out, they'll, they'll hook them together and, and use them as a, um, as a temporary space. Um, and so, uh, Mrs. Mrs. Dong, our, our first plug-in resident, actually uh, used the the space as a shower. Uh, and you know, when when we installed her installed her plug-in house, um, uh, we made it so you could you could move from the you know inside uh, into that uh, 
uh, addition. Uh, but we still wanted to allow her to make use of that extra you know, uh, space that's in front of her doorway uh, as, as a shower, which is what she, she would normally use that space for. Uh, she would normally just kind of you know, hook the doors together and, and uh, put down some curtains. Uh, and the water just, it's, it's outdoors, so the water just kind of drains out and the, and the, sh and the shower just hooks up to her, to her uh, kitchen. Um, so we, we, we had to deal with the most kind of uh, mundane everything, uh, everyday things, but uh, would also try to be inventive and creative with, uh, with, with those things. Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Fan uh, was the first resident that was a kind of a, you know, a direct uh, client of ours, um, you know, that, that was outside of uh, working uh, with the city. Um, and, you know, we were very excited about this. Um, however, what she wanted us to do was to build this, you know, to, to, to um, basically tear down this, this old uh, informal edition that she had made and then to, to really upgrade it. And for the, life of, for the life of us, we couldn't figure out how, you know, what would be the official process to get that, something like that approved. Um, you know, there's not really this kind of permitting process for, for, for uh, houses uh, like, like this. Um, so you have, you have official policy that actually, interestingly enough, all residents uh, are, are extremely aware of. Uh, they, you know, these are updated all the time and they, 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 they're always, um, you know, reading this. Um, and it's because, you know, a lot of these residents really live in very uncertain situations, uh, not knowing whether or not there's going to be this one, one big policy push that, that would just kind of, uh, you know, uh, force them to have to, you know, move somewhere else. Um, and, 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 you know, this, these are really kind of large kind of top down, uh, um, uh, uh programs. Uh, but within within the you know these kind of large policies, you also have on the ground kind of you know, you know situations that are changing, really on a on a daily basis. All of a sudden, you'll see the you know additions pop up here or there. Um, here in in red, uh, uh, this is this is the few streets that are around our office. Uh, we actually documented where you have all of these um, you know, all the additions. You know the area that uh, that would all add up to. Uh, as opposed to the, the original uh, courtyards that, that, that you see on the right. And so this is really a significant amount of, of, of space. Um, so we thought, well, um, uh, why not, uh, you know, you know, well, we basically were um, quite concerned about whether or not this is really legal or possible, but you know, they said, well, everyone's doing it, just, just trust us, you know, all we gotta do is work this out with our neighbors and it'll, it'll be fine. So, so, so that's what we did. Here you see us uh, working with them um, on, uh, you know, to figure out the design that they wanted. Uh, and, and this was uh, kind of a, a quick um, uh, a quotation for them of uh, you know, how, how much uh, this would all cost. Uh, it came out to about seven, over, over 7,000 RMB, uh, which is like a little over 1,000 thousand US or so. Um, and us, uh, uh, at this point, um, putting up the uh, the plug-in house. Um, uh, I'll also take this chance to ex tell you a little bit about uh, how we came, you know, came across um, the, this factory that we partnered with to to produce these. Um, so th this is a drawing that we worked with them to 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 you know to create as this kind of a um, uh, you know the, as instructions for how you would build this. You know, all the all the different parts are labeled and they go in certain certain places. Yeah, so it's actually not easy to uh, find a factory that's willing to take this kind of a journey with us because no one, you know, th these are not, uh, you know, structures that people are already building. Uh, this factory does not make uh, houses, uh, but it actually turns out that <laughs> I had a conversation with with my dad about, um, uh, you know, I, I kind of just, it was a fluke that I showed him uh, this material that I was looking for, and it turns out that he actually knew someone that produced this material. And so it was a family friend that uh, I met up with, and, and through that relationship is uh, how they've been able to stick with us doing these tiny, tiny things, um, and, um, you know, turned into something that um, uh, uh, they, were, they were interested in, even though it's not necessarily something that would really, uh, you know, bring them much, much, much uh, income. 
Um, but yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know if there was really any other way for us to, uh, to get to, to where we ended up uh, with these projects. Um, so the, the, the plug-in house that we uh, built for Mrs. Fan, this is how it ended up. Um, she, she, she had spoken to neighbors uh, about what, what we could and couldn't do. And so, so the, you know, that's the, that's the reason why you have this angle here. Uh, there are other parts that, uh, that are also defined by um, other neighbors. But then it turned out there was, a, there was a neighbor on this side that came out and she was just kind of uh, really concerned and puzzled at, you know, why there's this really tall structure right in front of her. And we're like, well, didn't you speak to your neighbors about this? I, I thought you worked it out. And she said, well, actually, uh, she hasn't spoken to that neighbor for, for like 20 years. Uh, they, they, you know, they, they didn't like each other. They, they had this history. Um, and so actually what happened was they, they, they had to you know, sit down over dinner and they spoke and they kind of worked it out. And, and we, we also proposed uh, a solution and that was to just kind of lop off that, that corner. Uh, which interestingly is also something that's that's kind of easy to do with with the material that we have. So even even though all this stuff is kind of planned out, you have all these instructions and and, and so on. Um, it's supposed to be kind of set up a, a certain way. When it's on the ground, um, there there are all, all all kinds of other situations that um, we couldn't expect. Um, so this is just kind of a diagram of uh, you know some of the you know different neighbors what they needed and, and also this this one last slice that uh, came from this, this other neighbor. Uh, but I do have to say, I feel like it, it looks much better uh, now with, uh, with that slice. And again, you see that it, it uh, really fits within uh, this, this context of all, all kinds of uh, people doing very similar things, just, just to, in other ways. Um, the, the last resident I wanna uh, uh, just mention uh, is uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Zhao. Um, and and I, you know, I, I used him to just um, kind of uh, uh, explain a little bit of our relationship with with these um, these residents, and that it's it's actually regardless of uh, regardless of the agreements that we have with them, um, we're really just tied to these projects uh, no matter what happens, um, and we you know, we we keep in touch through uh, through through WeChat, which is um, kind of the, the Chinese version of uh, WhatsApp. Um, and, uh, and, you know, all, all kinds of uh, unexpected things uh, come about. Um, actually, um, in, in 2018, uh, uh, Mr. Zhao sent us a bunch of these pictures through, through WeChat of this tree that was struck by lightning in his backyard that kind of fell over the house and he, he was really, really happy and, and relieved that actually the, the plug-in house sort of kept him safe. It, 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 it happened to fall onto a part of the plug-in that uh, uh, you know, part of the house where the plug-in was, um, and um, and he sort of he he thanked us for uh, for for this, which you know we you know we really didn't do anything to 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 really help with that. Um, but that was a great story. Uh, and in another situation, this was a a year after. Uh, uh, Mr. Zhao is a, a big cat lover. He 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 brings in a lot of stray cats. One of them got caught in between, you know, because this is a house and a house, right? It got in be between that space, it's a very you know, small space in between walls. Um, so he called us out. He's like, you know, I, I really need some help. So we went over there and and uh, uh, opened up a hole in the wall to 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 then uh, bring out uh, bring out the cat. But uh, you know, inevitably, inevitably, with all these projects, we did become uh, interested in. In, in scaling up this enterprise and make, making it, you know, something that we could use in, in uh, uh, different locations, and, and we did build these in uh, other 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 cities, other parts of China, um, and and we also decided to bring this to to the U.S. Uh, as I relocated to uh, to Boston, we started thinking of this as being uh, quite appropriate for some of these new policies that are coming out that are encouraging people to build. Uh, uh, homes in their in their backyards. We spun off a separate company, found investment partners, a, a, a factory that's based in the U.S. Uh, th th this is this is our new website uh, with with different models to do this. And to initiate this, we we built a bunch of uh, demonstrations. Um, this was uh, this is in partnership with um, uh, the, the city of Boston, the Housing Innovation Lab. 
uh, and conducted these kind of discussions and tried to gather input from, from different residents. Uh, this is in part to help the, the government make decisions on, on, on new policy. So here we're involved with uh, uh, innovating with, with, with policy also to expose people to uh, you know, different ways of building and, and, and also to experience this, you know, this, this, this scale of, uh, of housing. Um, that this is here at Boston City Hall. But, and also, uh, this, you know, together with uh, uh, you know, these demonstrations and, uh, and uh, creating this company, uh, we also had to uh, really look into uh, building regulation and and fire fire regulation structure structural uh, issues and, and and kind of figure out how how that happens because you think of building you think of building codes as really being kind of something that just that doesn't change right but in fact um, you know you're you you're constant you know people are constantly innovating with with technology so how do you uh, bring a lot of this uh, you know this these 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 new processes to um, to uh, to the market. And so here, uh, fire tests and reports, and we, we initially did a lot of this in China, uh, structural testing, um, different certifications uh, uh, based on standards uh, in, in China. But then if you're doing it in the, the States, it's got to be a different uh, certification. So the very, very complex, multi-layered uh, uh, regulatory uh, s system that, that we had to try to navigate. Currently, we're actually going through a process of applying for a, a building permit. Um, and th this is this; these are um, uh, screenshots of uh, a building permit for um, Austin, Texas. Uh, not not a big deal, you know, only only a few pages long. Uh, but then the, the actual process itself of us uh, revising drawings, submitting drawings. Uh, each one of these uh, uh, here are. Uh, different revisions that are that have been stamped and signed, uh, involving lots of communication with engineers and city officials and things like that, and it's just I mean it, it's it's really been a year long process of of constantly uh, um, making these changes and and, and 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 providing documents. Here you have uh, pages and pages of structural calculations, uh, and 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 many 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 emails uh, through 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 a period of a year and we, we think are close to to getting approval um, and this is for a, a small 60 square meter you know uh, 600 square, uh, 600 square foot uh, 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 home you know a, a, a kind of a you know a, a studio space uh, but a, a, you know lots of hurdles to go through and so so it really makes you wonder why um, we have such a uh, intense uh, housing uh, housing crisis, and and this brings me to the the, the last part of uh, of uh, my presentation, is kind of um, you know, learning from this experience, being able to test some some of our ideas out, and and the realization that um, even when you have things that are quite large in scale, uh, such as this, this is that uh, Wuhan hospital that was built in. Uh, it was like a week or something, something like that, um, uh, as a as a you know as a COVID hospital. Um, that projects like this are actually also technically not not legal. Now we actually have a better understanding of how this happens. I mean, there's there's no building code that actually allows uh, something like, something like this to happen. Um, uh, and 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 we know this because we actually use the same uh, system actually with the same company, use that system to build uh, these uh, uh, prefab schools. Uh, in in Shenzhen, this is something a little bit newer, and, but 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 larger, and you know you have these kind of you know newer technology, newer approaches that are are being used uh, and can be used, but uh, in all these situations, they are kind of uh, unique and kind of you know, special cases. I mean, we we just have to get permission, sort of locally. Um, so our our quest to kind of uh, come out this from a come from from a policy level. Um, to, to get these sort of approvals, we found that actually at the same time, uh, it's, it's also a lot more, it's just a lot quicker and, 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 and it's, it's more nimble when you actually can find uh, those, those, those right partners and relationships and those, those right situations where the need is really extremely clear. Um, and, and it's the right conditions to, 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 
to do something that um, that is hopefully uh, uh, really needed and, and, and useful. Now, as we do more and more schools, uh, these, this is a kindergarten that we they, uh, recently finished, and this is a larger school that's under construction. We we also start uh, you, know, you know we've been thinking about all these um, you know all these lessons we've learned from from, from testing and observation, and and also realizing we have very serious questions of the 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 role that architecture and, and space plays uh, in well for the example of, of schools and education and, and learning you know what what is the role of space and learning we have lots of ideas we uh, lots of theories um, but. It's it's difficult to actually uh, gain deeper insight uh, without having the you know the actual thing there and, and observing people using uh, uh, using spaces and it's it's not really something that you can do to test a building that's of this you know this scale. So what we did is we came up with uh, these uh, what we called plug and learning lofts, and uh, so this would allow us to set up sort of spatial situations in in learning environments. And have people uh, try them, you know, use them, and try them out. Uh, we'd set up these learning lofts in uh, different schools, learning environments, uh, working with teachers and uh, and, and and researchers uh, to to make uh, uh, observations, uh, setting up a controlled environment to gain insight into uh, how people learn uh, and, and how space and, and how space affects that process. Um, and uh, as part of this uh, study, we also had uh, um, students uh, in this, in this uh, uh, kindergarten. Th this is actually uh, in, in, in a kindergarten in Cambridge called Newtown. And uh, teachers uh, had, uh, had students try out this exercise where they would uh, draw lofts in the way that they imagined them um, and and wrote down the the kind of uh, you know, wrote down comments from the from, from the students. You can see here, you know, uh, uh, Miriam here is is five, and uh, Marie here is 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 four. Kind of talking about um, uh, her 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 experience uh, playing around the uh, this loft. Uh, but even for us to do this, we we had to go through lots of. Uh, paperwork, uh, I'd get certified for sort of ethical, their ethical concerns, um, uh, consent forms, and these are, these are, this is a bunch of the, the documents that we had to, had to supply. Um, people, you know, parents had to sign off on this. Um, uh, but in parallel, uh, we, we also did this in China, and, um, and, and, and there was actually, it's a different process. I mean, we, we still had to definitely uh, get permission from, from teachers, get, you know, partner up, partner up with schools and, and uh, also get permission from parents. But it was something that it actually uh, happened more, more, more fluidly. Uh, in fact, I, I feel like there's a little bit more trust in between all these different players uh, when it comes to uh, doing something like this. Um, so these are just different examples of how, how this project has developed. And, and the lessons that we learned from this um, have, have uh, you know, ended up in our projects. Um, I'm, I'm just showing this here to show this is something that I did uh, also while we're in lockdown and COVID, you know, with, with all the, the COVID uh, situation. For me to also kind of observe my kids in, in changing the, uh, the, the space in a, in a way where they could have um, you know, you know, more, more privacy, more ownership, uh, uh, all, all these different aspects that um, uh, we, we were interested in looking into. Um, also to get them out of my hair uh, every once in a while. And I'll, I'll just end with a very recent project we've been working on, some, just some spaces that, that are uh, uh, directly influenced from, uh, from, uh, from these studies with uh, the, these uh, plug and learning loves, um, and all these spaces adding up into uh, this this larger uh, this larger design. Um, that's uh, my talk, um, and I think this is this is the time where I uh, introduce my guest uh, Hong Huang, uh, which uh, is um, also uh, she's been one of my clients. This is actually a a picture of uh, the first time we met. I think um, th this is our office. Um, I. I thought I would 
uh, give a quick introduction, uh, introduction of, uh, of you uh, to, to our audience. Um, so Hong Huang is, is somebody that I think um, you, know, you would be recognized anywhere uh, in, in China, a very, very, very well known uh, media personality, um, observer, uh, cultural critic. Uh, you you uh, have your own magazine, uh, your own, you, you know, created your own, uh, your own brand, um, and uh, also having a, a very interesting history. Um, uh, I, I know that you grew up in a quartered house, right? Uh, in one of these sort of yes. histor historic areas. Um, I also know that you um, worked in a factory at one point. Um, and also uh, studied in the U.S. You went to university in the U.S. Um, and uh, and and actually, the the way that we uh, our relationship started was with uh, a project for for this brand you have called uh, actually called Brand New China, um, a, a store that. Um, uh, a store that supports um, you know, homegrown designers, uh, I, I believe, yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of young fashion designers and other uh, other kinds of designers. And it actually was located in also uh, in this area right next to um, the neighborhood where where our office is, loca is located. Where your office is, yeah. yeah. And I just thought that you know, with your perspective, I, I remember you had mentioned uh, something before about. Uh, you know, getting yourself involved with uh, people in situations, uh, if any, anything, sometimes just to gain an insight or, a, or or to to put yourself in a in in, in a you know in a place where you can have um, a different perspective, uh, and sometimes the perspective of people in in places with uh, you know a, a, you know a place where they have a lot of power and um, are. Are able to make uh, decisions that uh, can influence a lot of people, um, and I, I think part of my talk was to kind of show uh, ways that we try to uh, inform uh, our decisions. But certainly, there are plenty of situations, plenty of uh, 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 projects where the decisions are kind of you know we we don't really know how these came, how the decisions came came about. Um, so I thought, but maybe, maybe that's a way to start to, uh, from the point of view of a, uh, of a client and, and an observer. Yeah, I, I think one of the things about working in China is the irregularity of regulations. Um, take the project that James and I were working on, which was a new store in a historical area uh, where I personally think that the government has done um, a rather odd job at renovating it because what they did was they took a historical area. Instead of hiring a firm like James Firm, um, which has respect for the history of the architecture and the people that have lived in it, they hired eight extremely famous architects in China, who which was probably the politically correct decision to do, to emphasize the fact that, you know, Chinese people can, uh, that, that there are these um, very prominent um, professors in these institutions who can also, um, the, 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 their name somehow will bring in traffic for people to see. They were hoping for something like Bilbao Guggenheim effect, I suppose, or something of the sort. Um, it didn't happen because it was a very small area and to crowd eight completely different architects in terms of style into a small area. And then they preserved an old Qing Dynasty building. It became uh, it basically, it became architecturally not definable. Um, and so we were, since we were promoting Chinese design, we were one of the companies that were recruited, was recruited by the government to show up um, 
at the place um, because they wanted to um, have a, um, they wanted to have Chinese brands there. Um, so we asked James to do something, but we gave them a horrible, horrible job because we had two floors and we were told that we cannot have a staircase between the two floors. I don't know, James, whether you remember that. It was one of those things that, you know, we said we have two floors on the upper floor. We wanted to have a cafe. We want to have everything on the lower floor. We wanted to have the shop. Um, we gave them the brief description of all that. And, and then so sort of uh, the landlord, which is the Beijing municipal government, gave us the layout. And when they started designing and they designed everything and we obviously had to submit everything for approval, we gave it to the developer for approval and they looked at us, they said, ah, you want to have a stair that actually connects the two floors in your store. And we were like, yes, <laughs> that would be natural, wouldn't you think? Then they said, no, you cannot have that. You know, this is not allowed because of this, because of that. And there were just all kinds of like rather ridiculous reasons where, um, where that wasn't allowed. So, um, so I think that was something that um, I think James and the, and, and, and the firm knew the people very well. Um, I knew them actually less well. Um, and I think both of us spent so much time, both the firm and myself and the staff spent so much time trying to convince them that for a proper retail purposes, for all retail purposes, number one, you have to be able to allow us to connect the two floors. And then they said, well, you know, there's an escalator in the in the hallway. So why don't you just, it's right outside of your store. So why don't you just tell all your customers to, if they want to go upstairs to your second floor, what they should do is just go out and go upstairs and by the escalator in the hallway. Um, so this was, so we showed them all kinds of examples of, you know, um, other developments, for example, two floors of Dior, two floors of Louis Vuitton, and two floors of everything. And we said, look, we're Chinese brands, and we really don't want to show ourselves as anything less than that. The whole point is to promote Chinese brands. The fact that we are going to be um, international standards, but this like, you have to go outside of the store to get into a elevated to escalator to go to the second floor. It's just not, not the done thing. And um, I think finally, um, um, people's architecture found like sort of the perfect solution for it. They decided it wasn't. Uh, it, they they it was they decided to make a slide. Um, that is a tube that you actually can actually slide from the second floor after you eat a bowl of noodles and slide down to the first floor and, and try on your dress. And so the slide itself became sort of like a, a, a great point of um, attraction because nobody else has done that. And so I was really impressed the fact that, you know, that slide idea was, I think it was brilliant. Um, and, you know, people would actually agree to go outside and go up the escalator so that they can go into the second floor, they eat something. So then they can take the slide down, you know, so it became kind of like an attraction. So I think that's the kind of thing that, um, that, that, people's architecture does, like what they do with the courtyard houses, the insertions, you know, the hole for the cat and the tube for the people in the store and stuff like that. So, so as, as a client, I have to say, um, 
it's not easy to be an architecture firm in China. It's still, it's even harder to be a architecture firm like James firm because number one, they want to build things that um, that actually um, fits the environment. Um, number two is that they do want to preserve something of the original architecture they want to melt into the environment rather than to erase it and rebuild it which i think is always an easier task and number three is they have to deal with um chinese developers or clients and also um with uh, chinese regulations and and that makes it um either extremely frustrating or extraordinarily interesting to be an architect in China. Most major developers would go for architecture firms who are owned by architectural institutes like the China Planning Institute, um, a China, because they're official. Because if you are a developer, and you are developing a huge lot of land, you need government approval. And the approval comes after you submit your architecture plan and the zoning and the planning. So it is much safer politically to hire a government organization or quasi government organization an architecture firm that is actually part of a government institution like the Beijing Planning Institute, which is both academic and commercial, um, et cetera. Um, because then you have a, because the people who are approving the plan are actually classmates of the people who are designing the plan. And somehow that's an easier conversation to go. So it's much more difficult if you handle smaller. So, so this is why sometimes, you know, you look at Beijing and you look at the kind of money they're spending and you say, how can, how can this be so ugly sometimes? Or how can this be so weird? sometimes but really a lot of it has to do with the politics that's inherent in in how to develop land in this country um, but then also there are some amazing modern architecture in Beijing I want to really thank you Hong Huang for for joining us and uh, uh, giving us your perspective and and thank you again to the CCA